name is Hector Carcamo. Uh, I'm a research scientist uh, with Agriculture Canada, at the Lethbridge Research and Development Center. Caveus people weevils and ligus both are two rather important pests of canola. And um, more recently, in the past 10 years or so, we have found that the cave hippo weevil has become a chronic pest in canola. And most producers in southern Alberta, and southern Alberta we define as the region south of Highway 1 up to the Saskatchewan border and the U.S. border and the Rocky Mountains, so that's a very large agricultural area. We have had cave hippo weevils uh, uh, almost every year. We would find producers that are concerned with the damage to canola. And ligus bugs, they are a, um, an insect that are native to the prairies, to Canada. And growers often ask this question, if, uh, if I find cave sepal weevils in my canola fields, and I know that there are ligus bugs, because I've, ha I've had experience with ligus bugs in the past, am I going to be able to control the ligus bugs by spraying for cave sepal weevils at the uh, earlier flowering stage? And the two pests have um, somewhat different uh, life cycles, and they are, um, the timing when they're damaging the crop is a little bit different, and the management time is also a little bit different. So that is the, the context and the reason for starting this research. So for the cave seaport weevils, they only have one generation in our area, and they would uh, emerge out of the overwintering sites uh, as soon as the temperature is about 15 degrees Celsius. Cave sepo weevils are uh, somewhat specialized in their feeding habits. So they have a preference for plants in the cabbage family. So when they come out of their overwintering sites, sometime in late April, early May, they will start looking for plants that are in that family, for example, flixweed, Stinkweed are early feeding hosts. They do not reproduce there. They only feed there for a short time. Then they move on to the crops such as canola, uh, oriental mustard, brown mustard. Those are, are hosts of the sepal weevil. When the pods are about an inch long, they will actually uh, feed on the pod. Then they will lay an egg. And from the egg, there will be a, a larva. Generally, they eat about 20% of the seeds inside the, inside the pod. And that's how they actually cause the, uh, the economic damage, is the feeding of the larva inside the pod that causes uh, the damage. The um, economic damage that is caused by ligos does not occur from those adults that are feeding on the flowers or the buds. It's the progeny of those ligos, it's their, their babies, that are actually going to cause the damage on the uh, soft seeds of canola. Uh, ligus bugs are more generalists. They are not as picky as the cave sepal weevil as to what they eat, uh, but canola is certainly one of their favorite hosts. Fields that were planted early um, had large numbers of cave sepal weevils, which were expected given the life cycles of the insects, and fields planted late would have a higher risk of ligus bugs. So the, the take home message from this part of the research for growers is that if you plant your canola early, as you should attempt to do to maximize yield, you are quite likely to have to manage the cave sepal weevil. For those fields that were planted late, they would accumulate uh, higher numbers of ligus bugs, but the sepa weevil was never an issue in those fields. So the, the economic threshold for cave sepa weevil that we are recommending is uh, about two or three weevils per sweep. So you take your 10 walking sweeps, and then you would, uh, at early flower, then you would count how many of those weevils you actually have in, in the 10 sweeps. And if you have an average of two or three weevils per sweep, then there's an indication that you, you have reached the economic threshold. However, you, you don't want to make the decision so early in the growth stage. Uh, you should wait at least one more week, preferably 10 days, and go back to the fields. And once the, the field is more uniform in terms of flowering, you will likely find that the number of weevils are lower than what you found the first time. 
So it's really important not to make this spray decision too early, to wait until the crop is about 20% flower. Again, sample the border, sample the inside of the field, at least 50 meters inside. Take your, your sweeps as recommended, then count the weevils. And if you have about two or three weevils per sweep, then there is a uh, possibility that the, that the weevil could cause economic damage. For Lycos bugs, the timing of sampling is a little bit different. Uh, the recommendation is to sample for Lycos bugs at the early pod stage. And that is usually when the crop has completed about 90% of flowering. And the threshold for Lycos bugs at the early pod stage is uh, about 1.5 per sweep. So we say if you have between one to two LIGOs per sweep at the early pod in our region in southern Alberta, then we, uh, we can start thinking about an action to manage those pests. There is another crop stage that is also uh, recommended as far as LIGOs management goes. And for, uh, for canola at the mid pod stage, which uh, at, at this time, most of the flowers would be gone from the field. There, was, there will be very, very few flowers. And this would likely happen about a week or two after the early pod stage. At that time, the threshold is a little bit higher. So we say two to three ligus per sweep at that time is the threshold for the uh, mid pod stage. The question of joint thresholds at the uh, flower stage, so before the pod stage, it's a question that farmers often ask. They would like to know if there is a, um, a combined threshold for ligus and for weevils. And so far, it does not appear that there is a need for a joint threshold. Uh, all the results from the uh, field studies and the cage studies, they indicate that the pest can be managed individually. So if you have enough cabecipor weevils in the field, then you should apply the threshold that, that goes for cabecipor weevils. And it doesn't really matter how many ligus bugs are there at that time. And the same applies for uh, ligus bugs. One of the key questions that we asked as part of this research was to answer the, uh, the common question in the minds of many growers in southern Alberta. And we should keep in mind that uh, the issue of uh, controlling seaport weevil and uh, assessing the effect on ligus bugs it's a question that uh, applies uh, only to southern Alberta, south of Highway 1. If a grower has um, uh, cave seaport weevils in their fields they, and ligus bugs, uh, the ligus numbers are going to be very low in those early planted fields. So the decision to manage the, uh, this pest should be based only on the cave seaport weevil, and, uh, and growers will, will uh, find that they can can control the, the uh, sepal weevils well with the insecticide that we have. And there could be a small effect on ligus numbers, but the numbers of ligus bugs in those fields were never going to be a concern in those fields that accumulate cave sepal weevils. So the, the main take home message for our region is to manage the pest separately. So if you have sepal weevils that reach the economic thresholds, uh, two or three per sweep, then you should be targeting the sepal weevils and the ligus bugs should not be a concern in those fields. Uh, the uh, ligus bugs, they are a concern at the early pod stage, and they are more likely to accumulate in seeds in uh, fields planted late. Uh, around that time, the seaport weevils should no longer be active in those fields. Uh, the decision should, to uh, manage the ligus bugs should be based entirely on, on that pest at the early pod stage.